Welcome to this instructional video for the Dave Smith Instruments Pro 2 Editor from Sound Tower. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the menu items in the Pro 2 Editor. Under the Pro 2 menu, you have Preferences and About. In Preferences, you can manage how the editor responds to user input. Mouse wheel value adjustments sets whether you scroll up or scroll down on your mouse to increase numeric values. Knob value adjustments set how you adjust the knobs on the editor. When you set to circular motion, you can adjust the knobs by clicking on or near the parameter you want to adjust and move the cursor in a circular motion. If you need to make fine adjustments, you can click and move away to track a larger circle, thereby giving you greater control. If we change the setting to linear, vertical motion, you click and move up and down vertically to adjust the value. Change the setting to linear, vertical, horizontal, and you can click and drag either vertically or horizontally to adjust the value. About provides a way to check the software version of the Pro 2 Editor and to view the credits of the program developers. Click on the OK button to close this window. Next, let's look at the file menu items. The first two items are Load All Pro 2 Data and Save All Pro 2 Data. With these commands, you can save out the settings for the entire Pro 2 to a single proprietary file or load an entire file, perhaps from another Pro 2 user. The process of saving and opening or loading a file is common to all other files on your computer. Select Save All Pro 2 Data, navigate to a directory of your choosing, title the file, and click Save. If you wanted to load a Pro 2 data file, click Load All Pro 2 Data, select the file, and click Open. The next two items are Load SysX File and Save Data as SysX File. SysX stands for System Exclusive and is a standard file format for saving and sending musical instrument data files. Saving in SysX creates a MIDI SysX file. The process for saving and loading SysX files is the same as load and save all Pro 2 data mentioned previously. Following the Pro 2 data and SysX commands, which again saves all the Pro 2 settings, load and save single program manages one program only. With these commands, you can save a single program to your hard drive. Again, you could use this file to send to another Pro 2 user or reload one you have saved previously or that another user has sent to you. The save and load file commands work the same as the prior menu items. The keyboard shortcuts are shown here. The next items are for saving and loading Pro 2 banks. The Pro 2 has four factory and four user banks, each having 99 programs. The four user banks can be managed with these menu items. Again, you could save and send an entire bank of sounds to another user or receive and load a bank of new sounds into the Pro 2. These two menu items also offers you a way of moving banks from one location in the Pro 2 to another. You could save user bank 1, then load it into user bank 4, if you wish. The program bank item is another way of navigating to the banks window and offers a keyboard shortcut and Pro 2 Bank Manager Librarian offers a second way to open the librarian and again offers a keyboard shortcut. Phantom Program Banks is a bank in Program Manager that allows you to create and save banks of programs for later retrieval. This function will be discussed in the video covering the librarian features. Moving on to the Edit menu, Paste and Copy Programs works as would be expected. You can copy the current program to the clipboard and then paste it to a new location. Let's get a program from the factory banks. Select Copy, then click on a new location where you want the patch to go. Let's go back to User Bank 4. Select a location and click Paste. Please note that this overwrites the program in the Pro 2, 
So be sure to back up current banks using the commands described earlier in case you need to return to a prior bank and program configuration. The write command is used when you have edited a program or sent a program to the Pro 2 that is being held in a temporary memory location called a buffer. Whenever you are creating edits to an existing program, those changes will not be recalled if you call up another program and then return to the one that you've been editing, unless you write the program into a program location. When you click Write Program, a dialog box will appear and it will default to the current location. You can simply click OK and the edits will overwrite the old settings, or you can select an entirely new location to retain the original program as well as saving the edited version. Of course, you can click Cancel if you change your mind. The Pro 2 has a built-in arpeggiator and built-in sequencer. The arpeggiator patterns and the sequencer steps can be copied from one program to another using the copy and paste functions in the edit menu. Select a program whose arpeggiator or sequence you wish to move. Click copy. Select the program you want to move it to and select paste. The rename program function allows you to rename a program and set the program category. When you click Rename Program, you are presented with this dialog. Here, you can enter a new name, then click here to attach a program category to this program. Program Category groups programs with a common theme together for easier searching, and we'll work with that in a follow-up video. Clicking on Initialize Program sends a nice generic patch to the Pro 2 as a starting place to build a custom program. And that's it for the Edit menu. Onto the MIDI menu. Clicking Receive Current Program will upload and display the parameters of whatever program is currently on the Pro 2. If you've made some changes on the Pro 2 and wish to do further editing within the software editor, Receive Current Program will bring over the current state of the program within the Pro 2. From there, you can do the additional edits, which will be heard on the Pro 2. But don't forget, all these edits that you make are being made to the Pro 2 buffer memory and must be written using the Write Program command under the Edit menu or using the Write button on the Pro 2 front panel. Transmit Current Program sends all the data of the current program shown in the editor over to the Pro 2. And again, please remember that this is only sending the data to the buffer. MIDI setup is fully covered in another tutorial video. Receive Bank. As suggested, this function allows you to receive entire banks from the Pro 2 into the editor librarian. Simply click Receive Bank and select the bank you wish to import. Click Start and allow the transfer to take place. You'll notice that you can import all the factory banks over to the librarian. We'll cover this in a later video on how to save out all the user and factory banks so you can recall them at a future time if you overwrite a program that you may need to retrieve. Transmit Bank functions as expected. Click Transmit Bank, select the bank you wish to send to the Pro 2, and click Start. The Parameter menu offers a way to open specific sections of the Pro 2 editor. Along the upper portion of the editor, you will notice a navigation bar with buttons for banks, oscillators, filters, delay and LFO, modulation, and sequencer. Clicking on each one of these will display the appropriate area of the editor. Each of these sections can also be called up under the parameters menu, and the related keyboard shortcut is displayed. Snapshots is a very cool notepad, if you will, for patches that you are working on that you might need to hold for later recall. This is like a tiny librarian application. If you wish to save a current program or edit for recall, just click Add Snapshots under the Snapshots menu or use the keyboard shortcut. If you select View Snapshots, you can review and call your saved programs. And once again, sending a program to the Pro 2 from the Snapshots window is only sending it to the Pro 2 buffer. Write the program in if you want it to be saved. You also have the option to save a collection of snapshots as a file and recall them by clicking on the File button. Standard Save and Load dialogs will appear. There will be additional information on the Snapshots feature in later videos. C 
sequencer, arpeggiator, and filter templates from all the available programs can be recalled and applied to a different program. More on this in another video. The sound generator menu has three very powerful program generator algorithms to almost instantly create a massive number of original, sometimes surprising new programs. The three generators are Program Genetics, which uses a parent and child model, Morpher, that blends two patches together with some very interesting results, and Patch Maker, which is a little less random and allows you to pull related parameters from various programs. There's a full video to cover these sound generators. Check that one out when you have a minute. Under the Options menu, you can select Full Screen, which will expand the Pro 2 and hide the rest of your desktop. Just hit the Escape key on your keyboard to return to normal view. We'll discuss the V Piano at a later time, and Help Online will open a Help page on the Sound Tower website. That covers the bulk of the menu items for the Pro 2 editor. More detail on the more involved menu items will be shown in separate tutorials. Take some time to view them all so you can take full advantage of this great addition to the Dave Smith Instruments Pro 2 synth. Sound tower editors allow you to reach inside your instrument like never before. It's so easy.